Hey guys, it is Danny, and welcome to this updated video on the tropics. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at our disturbances across the basin. So we have a disturbance that was located in the Caribbean Sea that is likely to develop into a tropical cyclone. And we also have a disturbance located off the coast of South Carolina that is likely to bring inclement weather to portions of the southeastern U.S. And so we'll also take a look at what the GFS model is expected for the next several Several days or so and before I go into details Okay, so let us start off with that disturbance that is located over Honduras. So we're seeing that X to show the location of it. And as of right now, we're seeing that there is a high 70% chance that we could potentially have this developing into a tropical cyclone. And so if it does achieve tropical cyclone status uh, over in the Eastern Pacific, it will occur the name Pamela, which is the next name to be used for the Pacific hurricane season and so as of right now there is a lot of moisture in the vicinity of central america and so all that rainfall is likely to continue probably for the next uh, day or two and afterwards we're going to be having the system making its way out into the open water so even though it is likely that this might develop it is not going to be much of a threat to land after it makes its way over into the open waters and so now let's go ahead and take a look at what is going on over in the atlantic basin so here we have this disturbance so as of right now it is given a 20 percent chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone and so development of this is not not really anticipated so significant development isn't very likely due to unfavorable conditions and so this is likely to make its way to the northeast during the next couple of days and while doing so it is likely to bring uh, some inclement weather probably some heavy rainfall and gusty winds to sections of the Carolinas so if you're there you want to be mindful of that but nothing that is very very impactful is not really anticipated as a result of this disturbance guys and so looking at the rest of the basin we don't have any other disturbances as of right now but let's go ahead and take a look at conditions and then we'll take a look at what the gfs model is anticipating all right so first up is ocean temperatures and so we're seeing here that ocean temperatures are fairly warm uh, especially in the caribbean and as you look over into the eastern pacific also very very warm as well so those warm ocean waters in the eastern pacific coupled with favorable conditions such as that favorable wind shear then it is likely that we will definitely have tropical development being induced and so for the rest of the season things are expected to slowly cool down as we approach the end of the year and so in terms of the wind shear now we're seeing that we have the different colors that indicate the favorability of the shear we have the green that means favorable this is what accommodates tropical development we have the yellow that means neutral which isn't too impactful but once we see the red that means unfavorable which means that conditions will likely prevent significant tropical developments and so in the vicinity of or a disturbance located off the coast of south carolina we definitely have it to be an iteration of uh unfavorable wind shear as you can see right here we have those red lines all around it so that is what they signify and so it is not likely that we will have significant development of this as i said earlier and as for the rest of the base we have some spots of favorable shear here and there but for the most part most of the basin is experiencing unfavorable upper level winds and this is likely to uh, keep things a little bit quiet for now but once we have conditions becoming increasingly favorable and we have our disturbances uh, developing whether it be from the south caribbean or coming from the main development region then things are going to start to get interesting so let's go ahead and take a look at the saharan dust map and so uh, the different colors they indicate how dense it is so when we have the light yellow shade that indicates that there isn't much dust present but as we head to the dark orange red that pink shade a lot of dust so the environment is very hostile because all that dense dry air prevents moisture from developing and so moisture is what our tropical cyclones need so without that then it is not likely that we will have development or intensification and so we see here that we have some that is making its way across the caribbean uh but it's not 
a whole lot as what was there before but some areas probably experiencing hazy skies at times and so this is not expected to become uh, much worse than it is now and so in terms of all the moisture that is out in the open waters of the main development region they will be encountering that unfavorable wind shear as well as some of that dry air so once we have dry air infiltration that is likely to dissipate any convection that is developing and so guys now let's go ahead and take a look at what or GFS model is anticipating for the next uh, probably week or two and so this is a map showing the isobars and the isobars are the black lines they're lines of equal pressure and so when you see them being very close uh, or very tightly packed in a circular manner with the pressure below 10 13 millibars that is a low pressure system and can be or tropical cyclones and so when you have them being very very close to each other uh, that signifies a steep gradient which means that it is a pretty strong system that we're looking at so this is by Sunday the 10th of October and so before I start guys know that this is just a prediction and things can change well things are likely to change because uh, over the past couple of days we've definitely seen changes in what the model is anticipating so let's see what is expected as of right now are they still consistent with some development taking place next week all right so as i said this is by the 10th of october sunday and so here we have it showing increased moisture in the vicinity of the bahamas as well as just off north carolina uh, that is likely that disturbance that is currently there uh, interestingly we have the model showing it getting in shape so if we have it uh, somewhat stolen in that region and then that favorable shear setting in then it is likely that we could have some development of this but for the most part it is going to be offshore and so out of the main development region to the east of the windward islands we're seeing a 1008 millibar low pressure system so the isobars are not very tightly packed here but let's see what happens as we head out so this is by wednesday the 13th of the month and we're seeing here that we definitely have increased moisture as a result of probably a wave making its way by in sections of the caribbean especially right in the vicinity of hispaniola right there so let's go further and so this is by saturday the 16th of October and interestingly GFS is showing a 1006 millibar low pressure system in the northwestern Caribbean and a 1008 millibar low pressure system north of Puerto Rico. And so going to Wednesday the 20th of the month now, here we have GFS showing that the disturbance that was in the northwestern Caribbean is making its way up to the northeast and is now a 1,002 millibar low pressure system over South Florida. So this is quite interesting. Uh, GFS has been hinting towards some development taking place, but things have been changing dramatically. And this is another one of those changes. So we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome and again this what you're seeing here does not have to be the outcome but i will say that it is likely that we could probably have another storm or two uh, possibly even more if conditions are just right and we have uh, quite a bit of disturbances present uh, we could definitely have more storms before this hurricane season ends and so again the final name to be used for this hurricane season is wanda and afterwards if we have any more development then we will turn to the supplementary list and that first name on it is adria so we have to wait and see what's going to be the eventual outcome and of course guys i will keep you updated as time goes by and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be with the wise